Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we come in this Eucharistic celebration honoring our devotion to Our Lady, our Immaculate Mother. This Saturday, a day of devotion to Our Lady, let us ask Our Lady to help us to live lives that are holy and pure so that we could be worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. And so, in the beginning of this Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Holy Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, rise up from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord sent Nathan to David, and when he came to him, Nathan said, Judge this case for me. In a certain town, there were two men, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had flocks and herds in great numbers, but the poor man had nothing at all except one little ewe lamb that he had bought. He nourished her, and she grew up with him and his children. She shared the little food he had and drank from his cup and slept in his bosom. She was like a daughter to him. Now the rich man received a visitor, but he would not take from his own flocks and herds to prepare a meal for the wayfarer who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and made a meal of it for his visitor. David grew very angry with that man and said to him, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this merits death. He shall restore the ewe lamb fourfold because he has done this and has had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, The sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will bring evil upon you out of your own house. I will take your wives while you live to see it and will give them to your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in broad daylight. You have done this deed in secret but I will bring it about in the presence of all Israel and with the sun looking down. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan answered David, The Lord on his part has forgiven your sin. You shall not die. But since you have utterly spurned the Lord by this deed, the child born to you must surely die. Then Nathan returned to his house. The Lord struck the child that the wife of Uriah had borne to David, and it became desperately ill. David besought God for the child. He kept a fast, retiring for the night, to lie on the ground, cloth in sackcloth. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground. But he would not, nor would he take food with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, 
and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and uh, thank you for joining us in this celebration and for those who are pilgrims coming over to the manila cathedral our mother church the home of our lady our patroness the immaculate conception and today as we celebrate this eucharist in honor of our immaculate mother Jesus teaches us today about being saved from the life of sin. In our gospel passage today, we hear about the familiar story of the disciples being saved from a storm in the sea. The disciples were crossing the sea together with Jesus, and they experienced a violent storm, a squall. And the winds were tossing the boats. It was already filling the boat with water. Thankfully, Jesus was there. And with his power, he commanded the storm to be still and to be quiet. And Jesus saved them from this violent storm. My dear brothers and sisters, I think the gospel reading today is a perfect image of what David in our first reading today, was experiencing. 
But David was experiencing a much stronger storm. The storm of sin. My dear brothers and sisters, sin is like a storm. It can trap you inside a whirlwind of lies, of corruption, of deceit. Ang kasalanan ay parang bagyo. Para kang hinihigop ng bagyo sa loob dito. At kapag ikaw ay naipit doon sa loob ng bagyo, sisirain ng bagyo ang buhay mo. Kaya ang kasalanan ay parang bagyo. Kapag naipit ka sa loob ng kasalanan, sisirain niyan ang buong buhay mo. We can see this in our first reading today from the second book of Samuel when we see how the life of David was greatly affected by the great storm of sin. We can see how David began indulging in sin. He had an illicit affair with a woman that was not his wife. It all began there. He was tempted to that woman. He had an illicit affair with that woman. And what happened? He started to tell lies. He changed the narrative. He corrupted his officials. And then later on, he murdered the husband of that woman so that he could take in the wife. Nakita niyo na mga kapatid, ang kasalanan ay parang bagyo. Una, nagkagusto lang siya doon sa babae na hindi niya asawa. Pero ayan, nagsimula na ang bagyo ng kasalanan. Naipit na sa loob si David. Nagsinungaling na siya. Sinuhulan na niya ang kanyang mga officials para yung asawang lalaki ni Bathsheba ay ilagay sa labanan para patayin. Dahil sa kanyang kagustuhan sa babae na hindi niya asawa, nagsinungaling na siya, kinuntsaba niya ang kanyang mga kaibigan, pumatay na siya ng tao. Kapag naipit ka nga sa kasalanan, ay masisira na ang buong buhay mo. Later on, we will see that it was not only David who was affected. The storm of sin affected his own family. The death of his son. And it caused him terrible suffering. My dear brothers and sisters, that is the effect of sin. It can trap you into this whirlwind of suffering. And it can affect your life, not only your life, but the life of those around you. Naalala ko po yung madalas na kinukwento sa atin, kapag ang isang tao ay addicted, to a certain vice kapag ang isang tao ay nalulong sa bisyo. Halimbawa, yung mga nagsusugal. Sa una, tataya lang ako, no? paunti-unti lang. No? Katuwaan lang naman. Maya-maya, nanalo. Ah, magtataya ako ng mas malaki. Mas malaki ang panalo. 
eh kaya lang natalo. Kaya mas malaki ang talo. Maya-maya, umuutang na sa kaibigan. Maya-maya, binebenta na ang mga gamit sa bahay. Nagtataka ka na uubos na ang gamit sa bahay dahil sa kasalanan ng sugal. When you are addicted to a certain sin, it can suck you into it so that it could destroy your life and not only your life, it can destroy the family. It can destroy people who are around you. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration of the Eucharist, we are reminded of the storm of sin. We ask our Lord Jesus Christ to save us from this wind, this terrible wind of sin. Let us listen to Jesus. Choose Jesus. Listen and follow to what He is saying so that we could be saved from the storm of sin. We will be choosing leaders in a few months. Let us choose the good leader and not the corrupt leader. Because if we will choose a corrupt leader, then we will be entering the storm of sin. And it will not only be you who will be affected, the whole Philippines will be trapped inside the storm of corruption again. Piliin ang tamang pinuno. Dahil kung hindi, kung ang pipiliin natin ay ang korap pa rin at magnanakaw at sinungaling pa rin, nako, maiipit na naman tayo sa bagyo ng kasalanan. Maiipit na naman ang buong bayan. My dear brothers and sisters, if you know someone who is being trapped in the storm of sin, please, Bring Jesus to that person so that he or she could still be saved from this terrible storm of sin. In this celebration of the Eucharist, let us ask the intercession of our Immaculate Mother, our pure and holy Mother, that through her example, through her powerful intercession, we may be saved by her Son, Jesus Christ, from the storm and the whirlwind of sin. Amen. Please stand. Even the wind and the sea obey the Son of God. With this in mind, we can pray confidently for calm in a turbulent and sinful world. For every petition, let us say, Lord, calm the storms of our lives. Lord, calm the storms of our lives. That the Lord may guide the church, especially in the stormy waters that threaten to engulf it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord calm, calm the, the storms, storms of, of our, our lives. lives. That the leaders of troubled nations may work tirelessly to bring peace and justice to their countries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord calm, calm the storms, storms of, of our, our lives. lives. That through the intercession of Mary, the star of the sea, sailors, fishermen, and all those who earn a living from the sea may be preserved from every danger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord calm, calm the storms, storms of, of our, our lives. lives. That the disabled and those suffering from lingering illnesses 
may find inner peace in Christ's healing power, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord calm the storms of our lives, that the dead may experience the everlasting peace of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord calm the storms of, of our lives. Heavenly Father, May the trials and troubles of life's storm-tossed waters purify us and bring lasting peace to our souls. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. As we honor the memory of the mother of your Son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may by your grace make of us an eternal offering to you through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you who have joined us in this celebration and also all those who are following us through the online broadcast of this Mass in all our social media pages. And uh, just a good news to everyone, starting tomorrow, all our Sunday Masses at 10 a.m. will be broadcasted live through TV Maria. Uh, through the different cable channels of TV Maria and also they have a channel uh, in uh, TV media boxes. Uh, we will be announcing after this Mass, uh, posting on our Facebook page, the different channels where you can find TV Maria. Kaya mapapanood po ang ating 10 a.m. No? Alas 10 ng umaga ng linggo na ating misa dito sa Manila Cathedral, mapapanood niyo po sa television sa pamamagitan ng mga channels ng TV Maria. We thank TV Maria, the Filipino Catholic TV channel, for allowing us to broadcast our masses here at the Manila Cathedral through their television channels. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God Bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.